Hey babe, have you tried the new Laksa burger? Try, try, try. I never bluff you. Does the Laksa Burger got to do with Chapter 10, Globalization? Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mr. Go channel. Today, we're going to explore Chapter 10. How do we respond to tension arising from some cultural impacts of globalization? And this is Issue 3, being part of Globalized World. Let's take a look at this burger. Very delicious, Laksa Burger. What does it have to do with the cultural impacts of globalization? Stay tuned to the video. Issue 3, we are focusing on Chapter 10. 10 where we talk about how to respond to tension arising from some cultural impacts of globalization for that we will explore the first theme where we talk about cultural homogenization and hybridization and later we will move on to entertainment section we talk about american influence and korean influence before moving to our favorite section which is on food Let's take a look at the context. Globalization allows economic exchange in a global economy and this leads to increased access and consumption of goods and services. You'll be allowed to eat food perhaps not from your country and that allow the facilitation of the exchange of culture in areas such as entertainment and food. So cultural exchange can result in promotion of diversity and also allows for homogenization of culture where culture becomes similar or they can become the opposite more diverse so what is cultural homogenization we got to look at the word homogeneous it's a process where local culture are exchanged with foreign cultures not from your country to become more and more similar in an aspect with foreign culture and there are some fears that they will become the same as foreign culture that means they will lose their local culture this can lead to some foreign cultural influence becoming dominant and reduce the influence of local culture and it can affect cultural diversity across and within culture imagine being a Chinese, Malay or Indian without knowing any of your own culture that will be really really sad your local culture will be small compared to the foreign culture let's take a look at the case study of Starbucks or in Chinese they call it Sing Ba Ke every day hundreds and thousands of Starbucks customers are served nearly identical coffee in nearly 21,000 nearly identical stores in over 65 countries. That does not mean they are identical, but it means that they are nearly the same. They really the same? And popularity of Starbucks has shown that many people have embraced this aspect of American culture, perhaps the idea of drinking coffee, about drinking coffee as an idea of leisure or perhaps to show off of status because in some countries, a Starbucks coffee can be quite expensive relative to their salary. Next, we're going to talk about the case study of English as a world language where English is the main language of communication you are listening to my video in English so in many areas of life such as business science and higher education we are studying English 80% of the world electronically stored information is in English which means that if you wish to access the data or information you need to understand English and other languages can be overshadowed and this poses a threat to the diversity of languages in the world so imagine if you want to access information in say Chinese or French but you do not know the language even if it's available for you you won't be able to understand perhaps you can try Google Translate but that will probably give you a very superficial understanding hey liver faith fair times other languages might subsequently be consumed English as a language of the world let's watch a TED talk and see how it has influenced the world the world has a new mania, a mania for learning English. Listen as Chinese students practice their English by screaming it. Change my life! I don't want to let my parents down! How many people are trying to learn English worldwide? Two billion of them. 
in Latin America, in India, in Southeast Asia, and most of all, in China. If you're a Chinese student, you start learning English in the third grade by law. That's why this year, China will become the world's largest English-speaking country. Why English? In a single word, opportunity. Opportunity for a better life, a job, to be able to pay for school or put better food on the table. Thank you very much. Now you understand what are the different benefits that English has brought to the rest of the world, especially China. Now we move on to the case study of foreign culture rejections. There are instances where foreign cultures are rejected by those who wish to protect the local culture. Remember, there is this fear. So when the fear acts up, it becomes irrational or perhaps rational to them that they want to undermine their own culture, their own cultural, moral and religious values. And these foreign cultures will become a threat or considered as one. And let's take a look at the three articles of the rejection of foreign culture. The first focus on Beauty and the Beast, which was a movie. And later on, there will be a hoo-ha about that. <laughs> and later we talk about Avatar. And last but not least, we have Lady Gaga concert being cancelled in Indonesia. So for these three articles, you can browse them below. This will help you shore up your content knowledge in preparation for SRQ. You can actually use these articles as your examples or evidence. And and it is important to consider these questions. What are the reasons for rejection? So you can use it in your writing as a point for these foreign cultures. And what do you think are the sum of the impacts as a result of this rejection? What will happen to the culture or perhaps the way they conduct their business? Because we are talking about the entertainment industry. Next, we explore the idea of cultural hybridization. So instead of homogenization, we have hybridization coming from the word hybrid. And if you have guessed it, this happens when foreign and local cultures are blended, resulting in unique combination containing elements from both cultures. So instead of one being subsumed under the other or being dominated by one, you have one that have features from both local and foreign cultures. Remember our laksa burger? Laksa come from a dish which is laksa which is well known for its spiciness and burger which is perhaps a trait of western culture. So you have the eastern culture and western culture mixed together we have localization or in other words cultural hybridization. One key trait of cultural hybridization is to produce new products which may or may not include all the elements but they will feature something like for example the Maharaja Mac which we all know probably would show its height as well as relevance in India. So in India, the dominant religion is Hinduism and they do not eat beef. So probably their burger will not contain beef but they want it to be tall so they might contain other meats such as chicken. And this can lead to changes to the nature of local cultures. Some might call it an evolution, some might call it a deterioration. So let's take a look at a case study of different genres of music such as salsa. So salsa actually is a Latin American music Music it origins in New York uh, and it's a mixture of foreign Afro-Caribbean musical influence and the North American jazz and rock. Let's take a listen. Rico, Rico, Rico. And there are also other genres such as rock and roll, where we talk about blues, jazz, and country being mixed together. Rhythm and blues, R&B, where we talk about blue, jazz, gospel, soul, and funk. And last but not least, we have blue rock, where we have blues plus rock and roll. So that is like a hybrid of a hybrid. And guess what song is this? Alright, that's the end for the rock and rolls. So that's all for the first part. Thank you and bye-bye. Stay tuned to the next episode.